Hello, my name is Dr. Maria Vasquez Roque. I'm a gastroenterologist in the Department of Gastroenterology in Mayo Clinic, Jacksonville. I'm here today to talk a little bit about a concise review for clinicians for non-celiac gluten sensitivity. The intention of this review is to do a critical assessment of what the literature says about non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Gluten has been found to be a trigger for gastrointestinal symptoms. The gluten-related disorders, which include celiac disease, wheat allergy, and non-celiac gluten sensitivity, have taken a lot of attention in the last couple of years in the gastrointestinal community. But what's important, though, is that celiac disease, it's an autoimmune condition that we know the specific testing that's needed to confirm the diagnosis. The same thing goes for wheat allergy. The controversy and the challenge lies around non-celiac gluten sensitivity. The first couple of studies that were published discussing the, in, the ingestion of gluten and inducing gastrointestinal symptoms was back in the 1980s. And since then, there's been a significant amount of research evaluating the role of gluten and the development of gastrointestinal symptoms. However, the initial biggest challenge is what is non-celiac gluten sensitivity and how do we define it? Clinically, we know that there's not a biomarker for diagnosis. The clinical definition is based on expert opinion and not adopted by everybody in the clinical scenario. But in brief, how it's being defined today is development of gastrointestinal and extraintestinal symptoms upon gluten ingestion. These symptoms disappear upon gluten exclusion, and these symptoms will reappear upon a gluten challenge. This is all in the absence of celiac disease or wheat allergy. Having said that, that means that, these, that both these latter conditions have been effectively excluded by a physician. One important thing that this review does for clinicians is highlights the differences between celiac disease, non-celiac gluten sensitivity, and wheat allergy, which all together encompass the gluten-related disorders. On the table, you will see the differences among the three conditions. Well, I do want to highlight that the onset of symptoms among these conditions is different, the pathogenesis is different, the HLA status has also been described to be different. Also, when you do a small bowel biopsies, these will be different among all these three conditions. Particularly when you biopsy an individual with celiac disease, you almost always will see damage to the small intestine with villus atrophy, for example. But on non-celiac gluten sensitivity, it almost always will be absent. And in a wheat allergy, it will always be absent. The features or clinical features of these conditions pretty much all range between intestinal and extra-intestinal. A big difference will be the complications because comorbidities and long-term complications of celiac disease and untreated celiac disease are, much, are far more serious compared to what the long-term implications could be with non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Of course, with a wheat allergy, the, the implications are more significant for, with an anaphylactic reaction. Clinicians need to understand how to first diagnose celiac disease, how to diagnose a wheat allergy, and exclude these conditions when they see a patient in the clinic suggestive of having symptoms induced by gluten ingestion. Celiac disease, you would have to rule out with serologies if the patient is in a normal gluten-containing diet, such as tissue transglutaminase in their blood. If this is negative, then you could actually think that the patient does not have celiac disease. You could do additional blood work ruling out a wheat allergy with IgE for wheat, and if this is negative, then again, you feel more confident that the patient does not have a wheat allergy. If the patient does um, have issues with uh, gluten ingestion and you've effectively ruled out these conditions, the patient can actually go on a gluten-free diet, um, either short or long-term, see whether their symptoms improve. But it is important that if the symptoms uh, do not improve fully on a gluten-free diet, then look for other potential conditions that may not be related to sensitivity to gluten. Often, uh, because of the media, patients start on their own a gluten-free diet prior to getting any medical evaluation. So at times when patients visit a physician, they've already been on a gluten-free diet, and it's a little bit more challenging to even exclude celiac disease, for example. So other potential testing that patients can undergo um, it would be lactose um, intolerance testing, which is done through hydrogen breath testing. Also for fructose intolerance, you can make assessments through hydrogen breath testing as well. Again, these are food elements that could cause gastrointestinal symptoms, and it would be important too as well that they are effectively rolled out if a patient notices that their symptoms are related to food ingestion. In summary, non-celiac gluten sensitivity is considered to be a clinical entity with extraintestinal and intestinal manifestations upon gluten ingestion when celiac disease and wheat allergy has been effectively excluded clinically. 
Clearly, the future for non-celiac gluten sensitivity is fertile. More research is needed to understand the pathogenesis and how symptoms do develop upon gluten ingestion. Also, establishing a biomarker clinically is going to be key, so this way we can select patients effectively and also be able to establish long-term treatment options for these patients. Bottom line is that there's certainly continued controversy. Uh, the literature um, has been um, ambivalent on supporting and refuting the existence of non-celiac gluten sensitivity. But clearly it exposes the need for more research in this area to really further elucidate the existence or the, uh, or the non-existence of non-celiac gluten sensitivity. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.